Good day and welcome to today's class. Today's class is a continuation of our previous classes on GSS2 mathematics. In today's class, we shall be taking the first topic under the theme numbers and numeration. At the last class, I gave you a rundown of all the themes expected of you to learn in GSS2. And today's class, we shall be taking the first theme and first topic which is on whole numbers. Whole numbers in GSS2 is a continuation of the whole numbers you did in GSS1. At the GSS1 curriculum, you were exposed to counting, reading, and writing of whole numbers into millions, billions, and trillions. In GSS2, we shall be looking at this subtopic under the whole number, which is a continuation of what you did in GSS1. In GSS1, you are exposed to larger numbers, billions, millions, trillions. While in GSS2, you'll be exposed to how to write numbers in standard forms. These numbers are so big that most times it is difficult for you to work with them mathematically. So in order for you to be able to work with these numbers, it is expected that it is written in standard form, be it very large numbers or very small numbers as in terms of zero points. So you will be exposed to how to express these numbers in standard forms. Also, I'm going to teach you how to express decimal numbers also in standard forms. Then we shall look at prime factors, prime factorization, LCM, HCF, squares and square roots, and then we shall take some quantitative reasonings. Now, this is a continuation of what we did in SGSS1, just like I said earlier on. Under whole numbers, these are some of the objectives which we intend to achieve. That at the end of the class, students should be expected to express any whole number in standard form. Two, you should be able to express decimal numbers in standard form. And three, you should be able to find the prime factors of numbers not greater than 200. So you have a limitation in this class too. Four, you should be able to express numbers as product of its prime factors. Five, you should be able to find the least common multiples of numbers, that is the LCM. And six, we shall introduce you to finding the highest common factors, which is HCF of numbers. Seven, objective. A, you should be able to identify numbers that are perfect squares. And 7B, you should be able to find squares of any given numbers. C, you should be able to find the square root of perfect squares using factors method. And 7D, you should be able to find square root of any given number. 8, you should be able to solve quantitative reasoning problems related to content 1 to seven. So we have a lot to do under whole numbers in GSS2. So we shall be taking them one objective at a time. First, we shall look at how to express any whole number in standard form. Let's start from there. Now, under whole numbers, you were taught in GSS1 how to express numbers as product of prime factors in index form. For instance, we have it that 72 was expressed as, 72 can be broken down as a product of its prime factors to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now, what are prime factors? Prime factors are smaller numbers that can divide a bigger number without a remainder. For example, 2 is a prime factor of 72. Reason being that 2 is a prime number that can divide 72 without a remainder. Now, you, you may also want to argue with me that 4 can divide 72. So why is 4 not a prime factor of 72? 4 is not a prime factor of 72 because in as much as 4 can divide 72 without a remainder, 4 is not a prime number. That brings us to prime numbers. What are prime numbers? Prime numbers are numbers that have only two factors one and itself. Prime numbers are numbers that have only two factors, one and itself. We shall also look at prime numbers, prime factors in GSS2 as seen under the content. 
But you were taught all of this in Genesis 1. And this is just a reminder. So, we said when 72 is expressed as a product of its prime factors, in this case, we then group them in terms, in index form. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 can be expressed as 3 multiples of 2 times 2 multiples of 3. And it is written as 2 to the power 3 times 3 to the power 2. If you look at it, how did I get this? This is said to be a group of 2, which is 3. And this is said to be a group of 3s, which is 2. So we refer to this as being written in index form. Here, 72 is expressed as a product of the powers of 2 and 3. We shall now look at how large numbers are expressed in terms of powers of 10. For example, 1 is written as 10 raised to the power 0. And any number raised to the power 0 is said to be 1. Be it a million, million raised to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power 0 is 1, 3 to the power 0 is 1, and so on and so forth. 10, in index form, in terms of 10, is written as 10, and 10 can be expressed as 10 raised to the power of 1. 100 is said to be equal to, in expanded form, is said to be 10 times 10. In multiples of 10, it is 10 times 10. And 10 times 10 in index form is said to be 10 squared or 10 raised to the power 2. 1000 in expanded form is written as 10 times 10 times 10, which is in index form is said to be equal to 10 raised to the power 3. These are multiples in powers of 10. 10,000 is said to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That is said to be 10 raised to the power of 4. If you look at it very well, you discover that there is a relationship between the multiples of 10 to the numbers of zeros of 10,000. And that applies to all. 100,000 is written as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which in index form is said to be 10 raised to the power of 5. While a million is expressed as this and is equal to 10 raised to the power of 6. 10 million is expressed as 10 to the power 7 in index form. And in expanded form, it is expressed as multiples of 10, 7 times. 100 million in index form is written as 10 to power 8. And 1 billion is written as 10 to power 9. Now, let me ask you this question. What do you observe about the number of zeros and the power of 10 in each of the large numbers? How many zeros will the number 10 raised to the power of 12 have after the first digit 1? Now, let's look at it again. When the number of zeros in 100, we said is 2, we multiply 10 twice. If it is 3, it is a multiple of 10 three times and it's said to be 10 raised to the power of 3. So we observe that there's a relationship between the number of zeros after 1 and the power of 10. So if the number of zeros is 4, the power of 10 is 4. When it was 3, the power of 10 is 3. When it is 2, the power of 10 is 2. So therefore, that will enable us to answer this question. How many zeros will the number 10 raised to the power of 12 have after the first digit 1? The answer is 12, going by the relationship. So 10 raised to the power of 12 is said to be equal to 1. After 1, then we have 12 zeros, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And how do you call this? This is 100 tenths and units. This is thousands. 
this is million this is billion and this is trillion so this is equivalent to one trillion as taught in gss1 but the question says how many zeros will the number 10 raised to the power of 12 have after the first digit one so the answer is 12 zeros let's take examples example one says we should express this number in terms of power of 10. so instead of i'm not going to express it as a multiple of 10 but rather using the relationship or the idea we just got consigning the relationship between the numbers of zeros and the powers of 10 then we can have it that this is 100 trillion is equal to 10 raised to the power of, you count the number of zeros, and this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This becomes 10 raised to the power of 14, and that is your answer. How did I get this? From the relationship between the numbers of zeros after the first one to the power of 10, as I have shown you in the multiples of 10. Kindly like our videos as you watch. Why we recommend that you subscribe to this channel if you are yet to do so. Also turn on the notification bell so as to be notified whenever a new video is being uploaded. We also recommend that you use the comment section to interact with me on areas that are still difficult to you. You can also share the link with your friends and families so that they can also benefit from this project. That brings us to the end of today's class. In today's class, we have been able to express whole numbers in standard form. So we have met the first objective of this class. Subsequently, we shall then take the next objective, which is to express decimal numbers in standard form. But before I go, let's do this as an assignment. I shall leave this for you to solve, that you should express the following in terms of power of 10. You have number one, two, you have them up to four, one to four. You are to solve one to four. You can submit your answers using the comment section. And the first five persons to get the correct answer will be entitled to 1,000 Naira recharge card of any network of your choice. Share the link with your friends and also show proof of having sent it to 10 of your friends, inviting them to follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you and do have a nice day.